I Saw the Devil is an incredibly intense, violent, bloody revenge movie with elements of horror. It is not a movie for those who do not like or cannot stomach gore and unflinching depictions of graphic kills. That said, the movie is one of the best revenge horror thriller hybrids to be made in the 2000s or of all time. Hey everyone, this is Jan Man, and this is a look back at the 2010 South Korean movie I Saw the Devil, directed by Kim Ji Woon. Like so many or most horror thriller movies, I Saw the Devil does not bathe in cliches, tropes, or conventions. For instance, there is no opening shocker or hook. Instead, it allows one to immediately become emotionally invested in Kim Soo Hyun and his fiance. He is an agent at the National Intelligence Service, and the movie shows his affection for his fiance as it shows him going into the bathroom to get away from his colleagues to sing sweetly to her, all while she is stranded with a flat tire on a lonesome road. Once he hangs up with her to get back to work, she notices a taxi driver has stopped. The driver eventually comes over to her and asks if she needs help. When she declines and says she is waiting on roadside assistance, the man seemingly walks away, only to suddenly reappear breaking her car window in and knocking her unconscious. Once she wakes, the man has her tied up, set to dismember her. She begs for her life, telling him she's pregnant. He looks at her with what might be empathetic eyes, before proceeding to dismantle her, tossing some of her body parts into a nearby stream. Not long thereafter, a local kid finds one of her ears, which prompts law enforcement to do a search and eventually inform Kim of her sadistically calculated murder. Consequently, Kim meticulously then plots his revenge and purposely begins toying with the killer known as Jang Kyun Chul. Kim physically hurts Kyun Chul, but only to a point in which he can recover just so Kim can hurt him again to make him pay, to make him feel the pain that he caused to both his fiance and him. It's well established and understood why Kim would want to do so, not only because she was murdered, but also because of the cold, cruel way in which she was. However, even as Kim beats up and maims Kyung Chul in numerous ways, it nonetheless does not keep Kyung Chul from attempting to and successfully killing various other people, as well as attempting to rape an underage schoolgirl. Therefore, it makes the audience root for Kim all the more to make this wretched scumbag pay. Although, as Kim becomes more obsessed with making Kyung Chul suffer, it likewise ends up endangering others, including those closest to Kim. The conflict between these two becomes a fascinating, wholly engaging cat and mouse game to see who can outsmart the other and who can make the other pay and suffer the most. Choi Min Sik, who plays Jang Kyung Chul, is absolutely mesmerizing in this role and is downright disturbingly scary. He is a human being, feels the pain inflicted upon him by Kim, but if it had been revealed that he were possessed by some demon or spirit, it wouldn't be all that surprising. At the end, when it appears that Kim has the upper hand, with Jang tied up in a guillotine, Jang tells Kim that no matter what he does, nothing he will ever do will hurt him, implying that he may very well be the devil or evil incarnate. It is amazing how Choi Min-sik can transform himself into such a despicable character, one who camouflages his evil ambitions by driving a taxi or bus for school children, especially after seeing Min-sik play a character like Oh dae Su in 2003's Old Boy a character who effectively elicits empathy from viewers. It just goes to prove what a dynamic, great performer he is. Lee Byung-hoon, who plays Kim, also does a solid job at portraying a tortured man whose own pain turns to obsession, borderline maniacal, wrestling with his own vengeful bloodlust. There's also a stark, deranged performance by Cho Mu Sung, who plays a friend or associate of sorts to Jang, providing him refuge while on the run from Kim and authorities. In his own way, this friend is just as psychotic and twisted as Jang, likewise killing innocent people, but also cannibalizing them. I Saw the Devil is incredibly well acted, paced, directed, edited, and shot. 
The only minor instance of possibly losing its footing just a bit is a couple questionably placed moments of black humor, such as when law enforcement find Kim's fiance's discarded, decapitated head in a local waterway, and they repeatedly drop it a few times in their shocked, scatterbrained state. It doesn't quite work or fit tonally. Also, the extensive, elaborate plans of revenge that Kim executes would be pretty hard to actually pull off time after time with such finesse and success as he does in the first half of the movie. But in the moment, the movie crafts and sets the suspense, tension, drama, and emotion so tight that the thought of any part being absurd or over the top is put on the mental back burner, even upon rewatches. As otherwise, I Saw the Devil is a masterpiece in carnage-filled, blood-soaked revenge cinema with a well-developed protagonist and memorably frightening devilish villain.